I love the nature, so I decided to take a solo trip to the Double Nickel Campground in Nebraska. I was filled with anticipation. The campground was known for its vast expanse, covering several acres of land, with a variety of amenities including pinball, mini golf, and pools. The day I arrived, the sun was setting, casting long shadows over the campground. I rented a cab and nestled in a secluded corner of the park. It was a simple structure, made of weathered wood, with a small porch out front. Inside, it was cozy and rustic, with a single room that served as both a living area and bedroom. The first few days were peaceful. I spent my time exploring the campground, taking long walks, and enjoying the solitude. But then, things started to feel off. I would return from my walks to find my belongings moved around. My backpack would be on the other side of the room, or my boots would be lined up neatly by the door, even though I was certain I had left them in a heap. I tried to brush it off, telling myself I was just being forgetful. But then, one night, I woke up to the sound of scratching at the door. I lay in bed, frozen with fear, as the scratching continued. I mustered the courage to get up and check, but when I opened the door, there was nothing there. The next day, I decided to cut my trip short. I packed up my things and left the cabin, feeling a sense of relief wash over me as I drove away. I couldn't explain what had happened, but I knew I didn't want to spend another night there. Looking back, I can't say for sure what was going on in that cabin. Maybe it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, or maybe there was something more. But one thing's for sure, my solo trip to the Double Nickel Campground was an adventure I'll never forget. I had always been an adventurer at heart, so when I decided to take a solo trip to Alaska, it felt like the perfect opportunity to reconnect with nature. I rented a cabin at the Heritage RV Park, a picturesque campsite located right next to the Homer Spitz Salmonstocked Fishing Lagoon. The campsite was vast, with ample space for RVs and tents. It was surrounded by the natural beauty of the Alaskan wilderness, with the majestic mountains in the backdrop and the Chena River flowing nearby. The air was crisp and fresh, filled with the scent of pine and the faint sound of wildlife in the distance. My cabin was small but cozy, nestled among the trees. It was made of sturdy wood, with a small porch out front where I could sit and enjoy the view. Inside, there was a comfortable bed, a small kitchenette, and a fireplace that added warmth to the chilly Alaskan nights. One night, as I was about to drift off to sleep, I heard a strange noise outside. It was a low growl, unlike anything I had heard before. My heart pounded in my chest as I slowly got up and peered out the window. In the moonlight, I could see a large figure moving near the edge of the campsite. It was a bear a massive creature with thick fur and powerful muscles. I held my breath, watching as it sniffed around, seemingly searching for food. I knew I was safe inside the cabin, but the sight of the bear so close was both terrifying and awe-inspiring. After what felt like an eternity, the bear finally moved away, disappearing into the darkness. I let out a sigh of relief, my heart still racing from the encounter. That night, I lay awake for a long time, listening to the sounds of the Alaskan wilderness. The next morning, I found bear tracks near my cabin, a stark reminder of the encounter from the previous night. It was a humbling experience, a reminder of the raw power and beauty of nature. As my trip came to an end, I left the campsite with a newfound respect for the Alaskan wilderness. The encounter with the bear was scary, but it was also a reminder of why I had come to Alaska in the first place to experience the untamed beauty of nature in all its glory. I had been living in Alaska for a while when I decided to take a solo trip to the Talk RV Village Campground and Cabins, one of the best campsites in the state. The park was big rig friendly with over 100 pull-throughs, tent sites, cabins, and all new glamping tents. Each site had well-groomed trees and greenery, immersing me in the complete Alaskan experience. The park also had two laundry facilities and a car wash. I rented a cabin for the weekend. It was a small, rustic structure nestled between towering pine trees. 
The air was crisp and clean, carrying the scent of pine needles and damp earth. The cabin was cozy, with a small kitchenette, a comfortable bed, and a wood-burning stove that added a warm glow to the room. The first night was peaceful. I cooked a simple meal, read a book by the light of the stove, and fell asleep to the sound of the wind rustling through the trees. But the second night was different. I was awakened by a strange noise outside. It sounded like something large moving through the underbrush. I tried to dismiss it as a deer or a moose, but the sound was too heavy, too deliberate. I lay in bed, my heart pounding as the noises continued. Then I heard a low growl, a sound that sent chills down my spine. It was a bear. I had heard about bear encounters in Alaska, but I had never experienced one myself. I knew better than to go outside or to try and scare it away. So, I stayed in my cabin, silent and still, waiting for the bear to leave. After what felt like an eternity, the noises stopped. I didn't dare to move, listening intently for any sign of the bear. When dawn broke, I cautiously stepped outside. There were large paw prints around the cabin and claw marks on the wooden door. The bear had been real, and it had been right outside my cabin. Despite the scare, I felt a strange sense of accomplishment. I had faced one of nature's most formidable creatures and survived. I spent the rest of my trip with a heightened sense of awareness, respecting the wildness of the Alaskan wilderness. As I packed up to leave, I looked back at the cabin, the claw marks a stark reminder of my encounter. I felt a deep respect for the power and unpredictability of nature. It was a trip I would never forget, a true Alaskan adventure. I had always been an adventurer at heart, so when I decided to take a solo trip to Alaska, it felt like the perfect opportunity to explore the wilderness. I rented a cabin in Denali National Park, a place known for its stunning mountain views and abundant wildlife. The cabin was nestled in a secluded part of the park, surrounded by towering spruce trees and a breathtaking view of the highest peak in North America. It was a simple, rustic structure, but it had everything I needed a bed, a small kitchen, and a wood-burning stove for warmth. The first few days were peaceful. I spent my time hiking through the park, marveling at the untouched beauty of the Alaskan wilderness. But as the days passed, I began to notice strange occurrences. Food disappeared from my cabin, and I would often find my belongings moved or misplaced. One night, I was awakened by a strange noise outside my cabin. I looked out the window and saw a large grizzly bear rummaging through my food supplies. I held my breath, hoping it wouldn't notice me. After what felt like an eternity, the bear finally left, leaving my supplies scattered all over the ground. The next day, I decided to hike to the nearest ranger station to report the bear incident. The hike was longer and more strenuous than I had anticipated. As I made my way through the dense forest, I could feel the temperature dropping rapidly. Before I knew it, I was caught in a snowstorm. Visibility was near zero, and I could barely make out the path in front of me. I knew I had to find shelter quickly. I stumbled upon a small cave and decided to wait out the storm there. Hours turned into days, and I was running out of food and water. Just when I thought I wouldn't make it, the storm finally cleared. I managed to make my way back to the cabin, exhausted but alive. The sight of the cabin, standing tall amidst the snow-covered trees, was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. I spent the rest of my trip in the safety of my cabin, grateful for the shelter it provided. Despite the challenges, my trip to Alaska was an unforgettable experience. It taught me the power of nature and the importance of respecting the wilderness. And even though I was alone, I never felt lonely. The wilderness was my companion, a silent witness to my adventure. I had always wanted to go camping in Colorado, so when my friend invited me to join him for a weekend at Pinion Flats Campground, I jumped at the chance. He said it was one of the best campgrounds in the state, with stunning views of the Great Sand Dunes National Park. He also said there were plenty of hiking trails and wildlife to see. It sounded like the perfect getaway from the city. 
We arrived on Friday afternoon and set up our tent at a spacious site near the creek. The campground was not too crowded, but there were enough people around to make it feel safe and friendly. We cooked some burgers on the fire pit and enjoyed the sunset over the dunes. It was a beautiful night, and we decided to go for a walk after dinner. We followed a trail that led us to the edge of the park, where the sand dunes rose like giant waves. The moon was bright and cast a silver glow on the sand. It was a surreal sight, and we felt like we were on another planet. We climbed up one of the dunes and sat down to admire the view. We could see the stars twinkling in the sky and the lights of the campground in the distance. We talked about our lives, our dreams, and our fears. We felt a bond that only nature can create. We decided to head back to the tent before it got too late. We descended the dune and followed the trail back to the campground. As we walked, we noticed that the night was unusually quiet. There were no sounds of crickets, owls, or coyotes. There was only the sound of our footsteps on the sand. We shrugged it off and kept walking. We reached the campground and looked for our site. We couldn't find it. We walked around the loop, but none of the tents looked familiar. We checked the site numbers, but they didn't match ours. We were confused and scared. How could we lose our site? Where was our tent? Where was our car? We started to panic. We ran to the campground office, but it was closed. We knocked on the door, but no one answered. We looked for a phone, but there was none. We looked for other campers, but there was no one. The campground was empty. It was like everyone had vanished. We didn't know what to do. We felt trapped and alone. We wondered if we had wandered into a different dimension, or if we were dreaming, or if we were dead. We tried to calm ourselves and think rationally. We decided to go back to the trail and retrace our steps. Maybe we had taken a wrong turn somewhere. Maybe we could find our way back. We ran to the trail and followed it to the dunes. We climbed up the same dune we had been on before and looked around. The view was different. The moon was gone. The stars were gone. The lights of the campground were gone. There was only darkness. We felt a cold wind blow on our faces. We heard a low growl behind us. We turned around and saw a pair of glowing red eyes staring at us. We screamed and ran down the dune. We didn't know what it was, but we knew it was not friendly. We ran as fast as we could, but we could hear it chasing us. We could hear its heavy breathing and its sharp claws digging into the sand. We knew it was faster than us. We knew it was stronger than us. We knew it was going to catch us. We knew we were going to die. We reached the end of the trail and saw a road and people. This experience still gives me chills. I always wanted to go camping in Colorado, one of the best states for camping. I heard it had amazing scenery, diverse wildlife, and plenty of trails to explore. So when my friend Jake invited me to join him for a weekend trip to Eisenhower State Park, I jumped at the chance. We arrived at the park on Friday afternoon and set up our tent at one of the campsites near the lake. The park was huge, covering over 1,800 acres of land. It had a variety of habitats, from prairie to forest to rocky hills. The campsite was spacious and had a fire ring, a picnic table, and a water faucet. We could see the lake sparkling in the sun and the mountains looming in the distance. We decided to go for a hike before it got dark. We grabbed our backpacks and headed to the trailhead, which was about a mile from our campsite. The trail was marked with blue blazes and signs that said it was a moderate loop of about four miles. We figured we could finish it in a couple of hours and be back in time for dinner. The hike started off easy, following the shore of the lake. We saw some ducks and geese swimming in the water and some deer grazing in the meadow. We chatted and joked as we walked, enjoying the fresh air and the views. The trail then turned into the woods, where it got steeper and rockier. We had to climb over some boulders and cross some streams. The trees were thick and shady, blocking out most of the sunlight. We felt a chill in the air and heard the wind rustling the leaves. We came to a fork in the trail where a sign pointed to the left and said, Eisenhower looped two miles. To the right, there was no sign, 
just a faint path that looked like it had been made by animals. Jake suggested that we take the right path, saying it might be a shortcut or a more scenic route. I was hesitant, but he convinced me that it would be fun and adventurous. He said we had plenty of time and that we could always turn back if we got lost. We followed the right path, which soon became narrower and harder to follow. It seemed to lead us deeper into the woods, away from the lake and the main trail. We saw no signs of other hikers or park rangers. We only saw animal tracks, mostly deer and raccoon, but also some that looked like bear or cougar. We heard some strange noises, too, like growls and howls and screeches. Jake said they were probably just coyotes or owls, but I was getting nervous. We walked for about an hour, but we didn't seem to be getting anywhere. The path kept twisting and turning, sometimes splitting into two or three branches, sometimes disappearing altogether. We had no idea where we were or which way to go. We checked our phones, but we had no signal. We checked our watches, but it was getting late. The sun was setting and the shadows were growing longer. We realized we had made a big mistake. We decided to turn back and try to find the main trail. We retraced our steps as best as we could but it was hard to tell which way we had come from. The path looked different in the fading light. We kept walking, hoping to see a familiar landmark or a blue blaze. But we only saw more trees and rocks and darkness. We started to panic. We knew we were lost and alone in the woods. We knew we had no food, no water, no flashlight, no map, no compass, no knife, no whistle, no matches, no nothing. We knew we were in danger of getting attacked by wild animals, or falling off a cliff, or freezing to death. We knew we had to find our way back to our campsite, or to the park entrance, or to the nearest road, or to anyone who could help us. We kept walking, faster and faster. We kept walking and walking, and finally reached a trailhead. We were lucky, but this experience still scares me. I always loved hiking alone. It gave me a sense of freedom and adventure that I couldn't find anywhere else. That's why I decided to take a solo trip to the Appalachian Trail, one of the most famous and longest hiking trails in America. I had heard that it was a beautiful and challenging route, with diverse landscapes and wildlife. I was eager to explore it for myself. I packed my backpack with the essentials, a tent, a sleeping bag, a flashlight, a knife, a map, a compass, some food and water, and a first aid kit. I also brought my phone, but I knew that the signal would be weak or non-existent in some areas. I didn't mind. I wanted to disconnect from the world and enjoy nature. I started my hike from the southern end of the trail, in Georgia. I planned to hike for about a week, covering about 100 miles. I didn't have a fixed itinerary, I just wanted to go with the flow and see where the trail would take me. The first few days were amazing. I saw breathtaking views of mountains, forests, rivers, and lakes. I met some friendly fellow hikers along the way, who shared their stories and tips with me. I felt alive and happy, but things changed on the fourth day. I woke up to a cloudy and windy morning. I checked the weather forecast on my phone, and it said that there was a storm coming. I decided to pack up quickly and tried to find a shelter before it got worse. I followed the trail markers, hoping to reach a nearby campsite or a cabin. But as I walked, the weather got worse. The wind howled, the rain poured, and the thunder roared. I could barely see where I was going. I started to panic. I felt like I was lost. I checked my phone, but it had no signal. I checked my map, but it was soaked and torn. I checked my compass, but it was broken. I had no idea where I was or where to go. I stumbled upon a fork in the trail. There were two paths, one going left and one going right. There was no sign or marker to indicate which one was the right one. I had to make a choice. I decided to go left, hoping that it would lead me to safety. I regretted that decision as soon as I made it. The left path was narrow and steep, with rocks and roots everywhere. It was hard to walk on especially with the slippery mud and the heavy backpack. I tripped and fell several times, 
bruising and cutting myself. I cursed and cried, but I kept going. I hoped that the path would end soon, but it didn't. It just kept going deeper and deeper into the woods. The trees were thick and dark, blocking any light or view. I felt like I was in a maze, with no way out. I started to hear noises. Strange noises. Noises that didn't belong in the woods. Noises that made my blood run cold. I heard growls and snarls, like those of a wild animal. I heard footsteps and rustles, like those of someone or something following me. I heard whispers and giggles, like those of a child or a lunatic. I turned around, but I saw nothing. I ran, but I couldn't escape. I screamed, but no one heard me. I don't know how long I ran, but I finally found a road, followed it for a while, and reached a town. But I still wonder what would have happened if I hadn't found the road.